Hello, a very good morning. It is Monday the 12th of December. Welcome along to Ireland M on Virgin Media One. Forget about the frosty weather. No, you can't. There's no way oh, it's I'm, so cold. I'm even saying that. It is cold. We're giving the new week a warm welcome with rugby royalty stage stars and a delicious dish. Absolutely. Stick the kettle on though, you're going to need it. Yeah, you really are. 100%. Although the roads weren't too bad. The roads, the roads were fine. weren't too bad. Yeah, no, the roads they are good, but yeah. it is frosty. Now, later, mm. uh, former Ireland and Lions rugby player Paul Wallace is going to drop by. He's going to chat rugby rivalries, Ireland's World Cup chances, and fake tan. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to spill some. Not for me. Spill something on you. That's <laughs> it. From normal people to the sound of music, we meet two stars behind a new blockbuster play. And as if, uh, no, sorry, totally wrong. <laughs> uh, as one in four of us planned. It's Monday. It's uh, very it's cold. A bit croaky this morning as well. A <laughs> uh, form of borrowing to mm -hmm. fund Christmas. Really frightening. One yeah. in four. We're going to discuss whether buy now, pay later services live up to the hype. And if you've got experience of it, we'd love to hear from you this morning. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. But before. For all of that, let's get your first news of the morning and say hello to Nicole Gernon. Thanks, Maren. Good morning. A murder investigation is underway in County Meath after the discovery of a man's body in Kilbride on Saturday. The man's remains were found among trees in a field at Belgary Lane, wrapped in a heavy material. A post-mortem examination took place yesterday and Gardaí are investigating whether he was killed elsewhere before his body was taken to Kilbride. They're appealing to anyone who was in the area on Friday the 9th or Saturday the 10th of December to come forward. Motorists with dashcam footage are being asked to make it available to Gardaí. Separately, a woman remains in custody in County Meath following the discovery of a body of a man in his 40s in Navan on Saturday. Gardaí were called to a house on Academy Street in the town where they discovered the man with serious injuries. A woman in her 30s was arrested a short time later and is still being questioned at Kells Garda station. Anyone with any information is asked to contact Gardaí at Navan or on the Garda confidential line. A status orange low temperature and ice warning is in place across the country this morning. Forecasters say the conditions pose many potential risks, including treacherous conditions on paths and roads. Temperatures are expected to fall as low as minus eight in some areas. A status orange low temperature and ice warning came into effect for the whole country yesterday evening and remained in effect overnight, only set to expire at midday today. Met Aaron says it will bring a severe frost and further icy stretches, accompanied by patches of freezing fog, with temperatures likely to fall well below freezing in many areas. The current cold spell is far from over, with weather warnings set to remain in place for the rest of the week. The Road Safety Authority says the conditions pose a safety risk to road users. The public is also being warned of the risk of burst water pipes and potential travel and supply disruption, as well as increased risks to vulnerable members of the community. The National Emergency Coordination Group met yesterday to review the situation and to consider any public safety advice. The group said schools will remain open and public transport will continue to operate. You might see temperatures of minus 8 to minus 10 in some areas over the next couple of days and obviously that's something that, that we just want to make sure that people keep themselves warm, keep themselves safe. But all the normal things that, that we do, public transport, schools, all of that will all remain open. The coordination team also discussed energy supplies as the temperatures plummet. The group heard supply remains stable. The National Emergency Coordination Group is to meet every day of this cold snap to consider the conditions on an ongoing basis. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. Well, as you heard there, Met Aaron says the low temperatures will continue for the rest of the week, perhaps falling even further with the possibility that the status orange warning could be extended, while the risk of snow is not being ruled out in some areas. We are expecting similar conditions through the rest of the week. Now the risk of freezing fog looks to diminish from Tuesday onwards and that actually may allow the temperatures at night time to drop a little bit lower on a more wide scale uh, uh, area across the country. Now looking on towards Tuesday there is a ch small chance of a bit of sleet and snow over the south of the country as well although we are not, not expecting a uh, widespread snow event in the coming week at the moment. An investigation is underway after a helicopter crashed in County Kildare yesterday. Gardaí and emergency services were called to the scene in a field at Brannockstown near Kilcullen yesterday evening. The air accident investigation unit was notified and completed an initial survey last night. The scene remains sealed off and the AAIU will return today to continue its investigation. 
Violence erupted on the streets of Peru's capital last night as demonstrations over the country's political crisis continued. Thousands of people have been gathering to demand the resignation of the newest president, Dina Boluarte, as well as the release of her predecessor, Pedro Castillo, and fresh elections. Castillo was ousted by Congress on Wednesday, arrested on a charge of rebellion and jailed. At least 20 people have been injured in the clashes, including four police officers. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. This morning will be bright and icy with severe frost and freezing fog, all leading to very hazardous travelling conditions. The frost, ice and fog will linger in places throughout the day. Wintry showers will also continue in the northwest, with a few moving into eastern and southern counties during the afternoon and evening. Across the day, there will be wintry showers. Temperatures will reach just minus two to plus four degrees, highest near our coasts and remaining below freezing for much of the North Midlands. Tonight will remain very cold, especially towards the north of the country, with lows ranging from minus six to zero degrees. It'll be generally dry with just isolated wintry showers in some coastal areas. A widespread sharp to severe frost and icy conditions will set in, with further patches of freezing fog developing and light to moderate easterly breezes. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Now, coming up after the break, Aideen Finnegan is here. She's going to discuss the major stories hitting this morning's papers. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, resident groups to be barred from taking high court cases. Residents' associations will be barred from taking high court actions against planning decisions under a sweeping overhaul of planning laws that will boost the power of public bodies to intervene in the property market. Big freeze as nation is set for plunge to minus 10 degrees. Ireland is bracing itself for the great freeze as temperatures are set to plummet to a bone chilling minus 10 with snow, ice and freezing fog threatening to cause travel chaos. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The Herald also goes with a kick in the Baltics. Ireland is brace bracing for the great freeze. The Examiner leads with Council CPO powers to tackle housing. On board Planola is to be renamed and given new structures while local councils are to get beefed up powers to use compulsory purchase orders under the most significant overhaul of the country's planning laws in 20 years. One billion to get our hospitals up to standard. The state faces a one billion euro bill to bring its hospitals uh, buildings up to acceptable standards. A damning new report has revealed. That's the top story of the Daily Mail. Mirror goes with body in carpet murder riddle. The body of a man was found wrapped in a carpet in a field as Gardaí also investigate a second killing nearby. The star also lead with stab to death on stairs. And the Sun leads with I'll use gun on burglary gangs. A furious farmer fed up with rampaging gangs on rural crime sprees has vowed to use his rifle to protect himself. Joining us now to round up some of the major stories in this morning's papers is journalist and podcaster Aideen Finnegan. Good morning, Aideen. Aideen yes. We are, of course, going to talk. We have to talk about the, 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 big, big, freeze. the big freeze. The big freeze. That's what it is. What is it? Day five of the big freeze now? It's bloody cold yeah, out there. It's very cold. Can you do that in a Newcastle accent as though it's Big Brother? <laughs> I Come absolutely on. Day, can't. day five of the big freeze. Um, <laughs> Something, like that. Something like that. Something like that. Fight your group. Uh, yeah, no, it is. It's. Um, and, and whenever we're seeing because I think I saw minus five, minus six yeah. in my car this morning, but we're talking minus, minus 10. Minus 10. So it could hit minus 10 in some parts of the country over the next few days. But there are some facts and figures around this morning. That is colder than the beast from the east that we had that I still mm. have PTSD from in 2018. And Why are you saying it so cheerily then? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to okay. forget. What? Really? Oh. I enjoyed the beast from the east. Oh, it was. Oh, well, I, I didn't get to work from home or anything like that, so mm. it was a bit of a, a trudge. And, but it is not, sorry, it is not as cold as the big freeze we had in 2010. Do you remember the big snowy Christmas yeah, we had in yeah, 2010? Yeah. So that was minus 17 degrees, wow. can you believe it? In Mayo, yeah. And that didn't beat the previous record set in 1881 of minus 19 degrees registered in Sligo. OK, so we're way off then. OK, <laughs> yeah, so we're fine. Nothing we'll get to over worry it. about. Get out there. <laughs> uh, but minus 10, I mean, you got to kind of think from, from a school's perspective, yes. from going to, like, I would imagine people are being encouraged to work from home a lot. Yes. To not travel. They are. So there was a meeting of the National Emergency Coordination Group and they are 
asking people to work from home where possible. They're leaving up to schools. It's not a blanket schools will close decision. Mm -hmm. It's going to be left up to individual schools, which makes sense because obviously you have schools yeah. in urban areas that, you know, don't have the same issues. The roads are fine. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the roads um, that are being prioritised are the national and the primary routes. Mm. So the secondary roads, which is where a lot of rural schools might be, or even tertiary roads, mm -hmm. they 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 won't be prioritised for gritting. So I guess that's up to the schools then in that particular area who yeah. know their community and who know how far people are coming in from. So uh, there's also 80 asylum seekers are being moved from their tented accommodation in Ochlachine and County Clare. Mm. Again, though, like what are we, day five? They've already yeah. they've already spent a couple of nights in that sub zero. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you think about what was it over eleven thousand people and homeless in yes. Ireland are in temporary accommodation. Yes. You know, with, with temperatures of minus ten degrees. I mean, yeah. are they taking? But we were stances, like, Are they trying to move people? They are. are they, they are trying to move people, and they're asking people. It escapes me now, but there is an app they're asking people to download so that if you spot a rough sleeper, you can log it on the app and some member of, uh, you know, the services can go out and, and make sure they're okay, okay and maybe bring them into an emergency bed if that's possible. Yeah, well, because people there know are, that app, let us know. Actually get in touch with us. There with are the people, that. there are homeless people still out there. You know, a friend saw Absolutely. a fellow on O'Connell Bridge in Dublin where so that wind... dangerous. And he was just face down because he was trying to oh, protect his face. So gosh. I think that they called someone to see if they'd come along. Um, so these are all things that obviously people are thinking about. They're thinking about child care, yeah. they're thinking about all this sort of stuff because if you don't have to be on the roads, they're saying don't be on the roads and I'd say travel chaos if it gets to minus 10 Absolutely. for no one's going to be flying really, are they? But can you work if you've got the kids at home as well? No, it's trying really to get not easy. Done. I've had to I... do it with the old RSV at home for the last couple of weeks. It's not it is pretty not easy. the RSV in the house? Uh, well, I suspect it was. I didn't take her to the doctor again because okay. she had it last year yeah. and I, I recognised the signs again. So it's been fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Solidarity yeah. with everyone out there undergoing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this mental health Supports maybe is what a lot of parents will need <laughs> at the minute, but they'll be struggling to get some because the guards seem to have uh, spent. Well, I suppose this just shows the tough job that the guards Absolutely. have at the minute and how it's getting even more and more difficult. Yes, so 2.3 million euro has been spent on psychological supports for officers and staff dealing with trauma and distressing evidence from on the job. I mean, you can imagine just even as a journalist working on a news desk, you, you, you see an awful lot of stuff that stays with you mm. but you're not the person actually on the front line dealing with it yeah so there have been uh, almost 2000 individual sessions paid for with 600 of them taking in the place in the first 10 months of this year. There's also up and running since 2021, this is the first time they had it, a specialised psychological support service for those most likely to encounter distressing material in their day-to-day -day work. So you're obviously talking about child sex abuse yeah. and, uh, you know, other uh, traumatic videos that people have to go through when they're in yeah. the computer, computer crime. Because I know we don't hear about it that much from the Gardaí, but I know I was watching a documentary on people who were contractors working within, with, say, YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. And their job is to view this material. Yes. And they only last six months. It's because they're horrendous. And they won't pay for the psychological services. And their job is to watch this day after day after day and try to find the places around the world that these crimes are taking place and pass it on to the relevant services. And they were like, you can't do it. Like you lose your mind. So yeah. obviously, paying this for the guards who specifically, specifically have to encounter look at this, this routine. every but, day. But even that list, you look at the new, we talk about the newspaper headlines. I mean, there's a body yeah. found yeah. on a carpet here. We have another in, uh, second killing nearby, stabbed to death on stairs. Somebody I mean, has these, to encounter so, these people. Listen, it's all fine and well us talking about it in the newspapers, but there's actually people who have to go there and be first on the scene. Yeah. And that mm. is going to have horrific uh, effects it's on your time. mental health. Yeah. Um, so to think that actually 2.3 has been made available, it, what I was really interested, so the bill was 780,000 for mental health supports in the first 10 months of the year. Yeah. That exceed, that's pretty much double what had been spent in the entirety of 2021. Yes, well, I think probably because of that specialised psychological support service, once um, members know that it's available to them and the, they have feedback from their yeah. colleagues mm -hmm. saying, I actually did get help from this, you should do this too. Yeah. They're also offering Garda peer support so you could talk to maybe another officer who has encountered similar yeah. traumatic incidents and that they can get support yeah. that way. So, I mean, it's the least you could do for 32k a and, year, and listen, isn't and it? At and least it shows that maybe on. the guards are willing to actually open up about oh, it. In yeah. the past, a lot of that stuff would yes, be bottled up Yes, I'd say up so. I'd say there would have been a lot of bravado in the past of, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm mm -hmm. fine. And an acknowledgement now that this... Yeah. is really important well, to deal with. Trying to stem the tide of the amount of Gardaí that are, not retirement, exactly, but that are leaving well, the force. I mean, would you do that anymore. job for that 
you know, wage, I wouldn't. No, I don't think many people would. Um, so 2.3 million, I don't think anyone can be given no. out about that. You no, know, I think that's money well spent. That. Uh, 0896 mm. to get in contact with us on anything today. Now, this is another story, I suppose, it's coming to... Um, View. I know the Cork, the Cork Diocese did this already this year, but uh, more dioceses are being yeah. amalgamated because there so aren't enough priests. The Probably Archdiocese of, in Dublin is obviously the biggest in the country. Um, it has, it's going to amalgamate its 199 parishes into 53 super parishes, which makes it sound kind of cool. How does everybody fit into the <laughs> in though? Because we've certainly come up to Christmas. Yes, well, Mass that's is it. packed. Mass is packed at Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. But it's also, you know, they're, yeah, they're like it's packed one day a year, yeah. I think, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, if you right. squeeze 200 into 53, ah, I mean, it's yeah. going to be a good excuse to say, ah, come on, well, we're not going. Well, a few people will just say, do you know what, I'll watch it online. Well, I there think we you'll, you, you won't necessarily have fewer services. Okay. There might be more lay-led. So this is the thing that, that is being restructured, that they have more lay-led liturgies. And so you might not have a priest saying Mass, you might have a member of the community. And I just don't think that and sounds like a bad thing at can all. Can a member of the community say Mass? Well, there's, I, I don't think you can just hop up go there and go, I'll do it. Imagine Mern going off on a sermon. <laughs> Tell you what. It'd be there great for a while. crack, guys. <laughs> we'll just do one on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It'd be amazing. Uh, but the thing is, is that this would, uh, this has been happening for a very long time. Yes. So lay people can do the liturgy. They yes. can't do the mass. Mm. Okay. So they've been doing it. Clare Island and Inish Turk Island, there is a, a parish priest there, Father John Kenny. He's like, that people are used to it. Yes. Like there have been people going up, leading the liturgy. They don't, you know, hand out communion or anything like yeah. that, but that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah. Um, if but, people still want to go to mass. I just like, think this is brilliant. You know, this is what the church needs, is a bit more lay input rather than having, you know, the diktat from one person. I mean, yeah. I'm not religious, but I know that, you know, you don't need a priest to have access to God, right? Is yeah, but it? listen, it's, it's all coming down to the whole thing. I mean, we're talking the guards, the shortage of guards, they can't keep a hold of guards. We're talking the teachers, they can't People. Priesthood is a serious problem, yeah, though. It is. Only two students studying yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Well, do you know, like, why don't they change? The, the Catholic Church does change. They make massive, it feels like this big target institution that will never change. It does. Yeah. They make radical changes every few decades. So, do they get a free house? I was just about to say, our producers after going, would you do it for the free guy? <laughs> <laughs> to be know. fair, you are. There is the, there is the, the, the housekeeper. The house. the pre, and you get a housekeeper. Get a couple of lovely, yeah, lovely house. Get yourself house. a Mrs. Doyle. That's it. Hey, ah, you will. On tap. Will you do it? Yeah, <laughs> cup of tea. Uh, oh, yeah, nine, six, only two, only one, men two, could choose to do it. You know what I mean? But lads, you could skill. You to lay. You could be perfect. Oh, you wouldn't get the house if you were a lay person. You'd have to train oh, to be a not. priest. So if you put, if you decide to put seven years in, you can get. There's people at home going, "This is blasphemy." We're talking about a house. It's not, this isn't blasphemy, it's all good. What do you make of what's going to be happening with, like, do you go to Mass? You know, maybe it's the Christmas Day thing, really, isn't it, for an awful lot of people, for their parents. 89 6 triple one. It'll be packed anyway with the... It sure will. Get the text messages in. More lay people involved. That'd be great. Aileen Finnegan, as always, great to have you with us. Thank you. Welcome back. Now, new research has found that more than one in four consumers are planning to borrow money to fund Christmas this year. Elaine Burke, editor of Cynic Silicon Republic, joins us now to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of buy now, pay later schemes. Good morning to you, Elaine. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, let's talk about this study. So uh, the CCPC has said one in four are going to be borrowing going into Christmas. And when we're seeing the cost of living, we're seeing people are really being stretched. But you're trying to have that perfect Christmas. It just shows the pressure a lot of people are going to be under now and they're going to really pay for it in the new year. Yeah, so it's essentially, I mean, this comes around every Christmas. Like, I mean, people are always under financial pressure at this time of year because you want to buy everyone in your life a gift as opposed to just birthdays being spread out throughout the year and you want to have the, the Christmas meal, you want to have everything to be just right, you might be getting decorations for the house and all that kind of stuff adds up and it all comes at the same time. So that's why you see services like this being expected to be used more because they spread the cost and mm -hmm. that's kind of what they sell to people. What exactly is this? Because I remember like years ago, you know, you'd be home during the day and seeing all the ads on British television going, you know, no 0% finance and all this kind of stuff. It's it's widespread now in Ireland as well. So what is the buy now, pay later and where are people seeing it? Yeah, so typically there are a number of different services and not all of them are launched in Ireland at the moment, but typically the way they work is they're short term loans, essentially. And uh, you're talking about maybe delaying payment by about 30 days up to maybe three months, depending on which service that you're using or what format you're doing it in. And it might be that you pay some of the payment up front and then 
different installments, two to three seems to be fairly typical, the number of installments over that time frame. And they can offer 0% uh, interest rates because they also might charge a fee to the retailers for partnering with them for the service. So what's actually happening here is that these uh, services partner with retailers and retailers are then more likely to make a sale out of you with something that you can't afford at that time. So the retailers actually pay to partner with these services and that's where their biggest revenue stream tends to be. It's not on your payments. So they loan you the money up front and they actually make the money from the retailer because the retailer is more likely to complete that sale. Okay, so the consumer is not, it's not uh, impacting them. I mean, like, what, what's the problem with it? Because if you think about coming to Christmas, there's a lot of money going out of your pocket where January, February might be a lot quieter. So is it not, a, is it, why is there a problem with this? Yeah, if so you're well, if you know what you're doing. And absolutely, that's the thing with financial uh, management all the time. People who are budget conscious are going to do fare better with services like these, but people who slip into a bit of budget unconsciousness, which services like these actually help people to slip into, yeah. that's where you can slip into danger. So it's not that there's no risk to consumers. There, there might still be a flat fee if you start slipping into payments arrears. That's where things will get trickier. Uh, and, and these companies exist because they will definitely get that payment. So you could end up being, having debt collectors chasing you for a, a, a hundred quid payment that you didn't make. And, that, and that's a really bad situation to find yourself in. So is in. It they're making it too easy for people who probably aren't financially literate, like younger people who just have got a card, a bit of money in their account, and then just go and buy everything and worry about I think it later? What you find is, and what consumer organisations and uh, financial management uh, advisors would say is that we're getting into a frame of mind where people are thinking less and less about how they consume and what they spend on and the frictionless nature of how we spend is actually helping that situation to, to perpetuate. So the fact that we use card payments now and you're not handing over your mm -hmm. hard-earned cash which kind of makes you a bit more conscious yeah. of what you're spending on and this idea of minimising payments like instead of paying 300 quid up front it's just it's 100 quid here and then 100 quid the next one. And it lessens the way you think about how you're spending. And that's actually what yeah. financial advisors say you shouldn't do. You should always be conscious of what you're spending. And consciousness around your budget is the key, the keystone of budget management. Because it's not real money. It doesn't make a difference. So if you're there and you're buying something on, you know, ASOS or, or whatever, every single website I'm on now, I see Clarina at the bottom. That's one of the... That's one of the big ones, right? Yeah, yeah. So what does Clarina do? Basically, it can be like this. It's a buy now, pay later option, right? Yeah, so Clarina has two options. One of the most common ones is the pay in three payments. So you would pay a certain amount, a third of the payment up front, and then you'd pay another amount, uh, I think it's 30 days later, and then another amount 30 days later. So again. you're buying a dress for 100 quid, but you're only paying up front 33, 34 euro. Exactly. So in your head, geez, this is a steal. Yeah, and I, the idea is meant to be for big purchase items. So it's maybe like an investment piece for your wardrobe, or it's a, a phone that you might need to have, but you can't afford the payment up front because phones have become quite expensive now, but still quite essential for people but the issue there is that uh, you'll see services like Clarin and stuff like that turning up on apps like Deliveroo and that's something that's not a, a, an essential thing that you need to have it should be something that's a treat and if you're getting yourself technically into some kind of debt for a treat you yeah. should kind of be a bit more conscious you can buy now pay later on Deliveroo for food that you're that getting was launched in the UK <laughs> And I, I gather you can, because my wife is mad for Clarna as well. She loves it though. And I think, I don't know what's going on there, but um, she just feels that it takes so much pressure off her. But she said that things now, you can actually go up with Clarna and pay in a shop as well. So it's just a way of, yeah, it just doesn't feel real, I would imagine. Yeah, and it's the same with uh, Revolut. You can do Revolut payments in store and online and they have a pay later option as well. So it's oh. actually just becoming a, a way that digital payments have actually become part of the fabric of even bricks and mortar stores. And it's again, just creating what uh, they'll call frictionless experiences, but frictionless experiences create that idea that you're not spending as much as you're spending. And at the end of the day, the companies that are providing these services want to make money and retailers want to make money. Their job is to make money, not necessarily to make your life easier. Yeah, like you, if you don't have the money, don't spend it, I suppose, is something that a lot of us would have been brought up with. You know, I, I don't have a credit card, all that kind of stuff, because it's like, well, it's yeah. not my money, so I can't and do actually, it. And actually, this has kind of become, this is the new form of credit that they're expecting, like, more young people will adopt and become familiar with, rather than using credit cards okay. or other kind of forms of financing that would be more common for, like, generations before. Like, is it different? Is it different to a credit card? Like, this isn't new. So yeah, with your credit card, it would have ever so slightly different systems. This has really been adapted for a more um, kind of modern focus on spending, uh, yeah. high levels of consumerism, where we see like even you you know yourself uh, with the fashion cycles and stuff like that. It mm -hmm. used to be that there was like two, maybe three seasons in a year, and now it's constant with the mm -hmm. cycles of fashion and people trying to stay on trend. And these kind of financial services are responding to that level of consumerism, where people are buying new 
constantly and it's like every month there's a new trend that people are trying to keep up with and they're trying to make those finances available. So in relation, to the, because these are legitimate financial services regulated, one assumes, and we do know uh, over the years that debt, you know, um, that people get in with loan sharks, like around Christmas time, in order to pay for their food. And, you know, we see people talking about doing Christmas clubs, like starting in January for your Christmas club so you don't get caught out. But people can't always do that. Is this a better option than going to a loan shark? Like, surely it has to be. But yeah. the debt collector can still come knocking at the door. Well, I would imagine that what has happened here is that uh, some uh, smart startup entrepreneurs and some financial services systems, because lots of uh, massive financial players are getting involved in this buy now, pay later uh, area so mastercard is invested in it goldman sachs is invested in it so it's not just startups and uh, disruptive services yeah and what they probably saw was the popularity of payday loans and, and they're they're quite extreme in terms of interest rates and, and and the short term that you have to pay them back and that kind of thing whereas these are trying to offer services that are more amenable to people more palatable but it's still going to accrue money for them at the end of the day and it's still going to actually perpetuate a cycle of highly intensive consumerism. Yeah, someone's yeah. making money somewhere. I mean, I was just reading the paper this morning that um, people are drowning in debt. The number of people calling the money advice and budgeting services jumped 62% this My year God. alone. So we know that people are just having to take out debt, take out loans to be able to try and fund their bills, never mind what's coming yeah, up yeah, to Christmas yeah, yeah. as well. It's really, really interesting. 0896 111 is this ringing home to you as well? Are you in a situation where you don't know what else you can do? We'd love to hear from you. Please do. You like, you just outed Lucy. Lucy's mad for the clarinet. She loves it, yeah. She loves yeah, the yeah. clarinet. Listen, uh, Elaine Burke, uh, editor of Silicon Republic, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We would love to hear to you on that. And still to come uh, later on, he's considered one of rugby's greatest props. Props love to that, him. Paul Wallace is uh, coming by for a chat. Will you love that. Oh, he loved that. Come on, lines, the tours, on, all the good. chest out. Plus, uh, we've got some festive food in the kitchen and West End stars on the sofa. And of course, tailored looks on the catwalk. Well, you exciting. okay? He's out of breath. He's, there's so uh, much coming up. Minutes. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, resident groups to be barred from taking high court cases. Residents' associations will be barred from taking high court actions against planning decisions under a sweeping overhaul of planning laws that will boost the power of public bodies to intervene in the property market. Big freeze as nation is set for plunge to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Ireland is bracing itself for the great freeze as temperatures are set to plummet to a bone chilling minus 10 with snow, ice and freezing fog threatening to cause travel chaos. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The Herald also goes with a kick in the Baltics. Ireland is bracing for the great freeze. Love that. The examiner leads with council CPO powers to tackle housing. On board Planala is to be renamed and given new structures, while local councils are to be beefed up, given beefed up powers to use compulsory purchase orders under the most significant overhaul of the country's planning laws in 20 years. One billion to get our hospitals up to standard. The state faces a one billion euro bill to bring its hospital buildings up to acceptable standards. A damning new report has revealed that's the top story on the Daily Mail. Mirror goes with body in carpet murder riddle. The body of a man was found wrapped in a carpet in a field as Gardaí are also investigating a second killing nearby. The star also leads with stabbed to death on stairs. And the sun leads with I'll use gun on burglary gangs. A fury furious farmer fed up of rampaging gangs on rural crime sprees has vowed to use his rifle to protect himself. Now, we've got uh, lots of messages coming in on things that we uh, talked about. And I was just inside in the gallery where all of this is run from because the big freeze, there's so many hot water bottles oh, inside we're there. Also cold. I'm bringing mine in tomorrow. <laughs> Can I bring mine in tomorrow and just sit there? Just in a blanket. The no. It'd be nice, all right. Freezing. Yeah. We hope you're doing okay um, at home. Absolutely. Uh, this morning. Now, um, we were talking about the priests and church system at the minute and how they actually have to move 200 parishes into 53 to try and deal with they don't have enough priests yeah. out there to do sermons or so whatever that's else. In Dublin, they've already done it in Cork. There's yeah. only two going through the training priesthood at the minute, which is incre incredible at the minute. Thomas has just said, it's sad that the church's scandalous past has completely overshadowed religious faith in this country. I often wonder, would more people practice religion if the institution was run? in the interest of parishioners. Uh, Teresa, I'm involved in my local parish council and parishioner training has already started in the county. So is that what it is then? So the parishioners are going to be able to give 
take mass pretty much? No, no, no it's the liturgy. So you can't do mass, the sacrament of mass. So what's so the what point, you then? can do a few prayers because you know you can have a few prayers. Okay. Do you know, some All people right. want something, Tommy, and a little bit of something <laughs> well, isn't better than nothing. Uh, well, absolutely, Sarah said. A lot of these issues are of the church's own making. Why are women not allowed to be priests? Sure, something listen, we've you've been said asked that before. For a very, Would I think you want to be a priest? Has. Oh, God. Free house, seven years training. <laughs> I don't know, it'd be pretty good. Um, we were also talking about the buy now, pay later uh, schemes that are going on absolutely everywhere. Like the Revolut offer it, which yeah. is so popular among young people. Clarna, another huge one, huge option one. huge in the UK, is moving over to Ireland as well. Yeah. And listen, credit and getting yourself into debt is nothing new. Credit cards, whatever. Yep. Else. But it's it's exact. It's like tapping to pay. It doesn't feel like real, money. real money. So whenever you've got these payment options where you can pay for it now or not pay for it now, just default for a couple of months, it's it's it not keeping on top of it. And I think people don't have the financial... Um, Savvy sometimes yeah. to know what you're doing. Yeah, when you're young, you yeah. don't know. But Margaret says, I foolishly sought financial aid from a loan shark a few years ago to fund my children's Christmas. I was riddled with anxiety until the money was paid back. And by then I had paid well over the sum that was initially agreed because those interest rates are extortionate. Mm -hmm. I'll never, ever make that mistake again. And people might be at home going, well, if you don't have the money, you shouldn't be doing it. Very hard at Christmas. Yeah. When you just want your children to have, you know, to, to just have a really good time. Absolutely. And think about the food and yeah. the presents, everything else. And you think, I'll, I'll pay for it now and hopefully be able to string it out over a couple of months. Listen, get in touch with us. We have a lot of text messages we haven't been able to get through on that as well. Or even, do you have children and you worry about them racking up debt that eventually you're going to maybe have to pay for Well, you have to be them. over 18 for them, do you know? You well, have a lot to have of kids card. have Revolut cards yeah. under it and, and they'd be but under there's money, 18. But there'd be money in that, right? But but when you have to... Anyway, sorry, listen, I know that you have Let to sign know. up and you have to be over 18, but you're like, listen, that's just lying about your so age online. Oh, eight nine six triple one triple one. Now, do you know what? Let's take a look at this. All this week, we're giving you the chance to win a very special prize. Sorry, that was different there. Two, uh, a very special prize with thanks to Sunway. Do you know what? Two adults and two children could be heading on an amazing trip to where? Lapland to meet no Santa way. next year. <laughs> Go on. So we may organise holidays to Lapland, which includes accommodation, all transfers and baggage, thermal snowsuits and all activities, including snowmobile rides, husky rides, reindeer rides, snow activities and a private meeting with Santa. Yes, yeah, so all you have to do is answer the question on screen. How many reindeer does Santa have? Is it A... Nine or B, 12. All of the details are on screen there. We will have this property for tomorrow because this was a bit of a surprise to us, guys, it as sure you can was. imagine. We'll have this property tomorrow. Yeah, coming up next, we're going to be talking to former Ireland, Leinster and Lions legend prop. That's and, what he said. Anyway. And Limerick man. Uh, Paul Wallace is going to be chatting to us after the break. Welcome back. Now, our next guest is a former Ireland and Lions rugby star who racked up an impressive 46 caps for Ireland during his time on the pitch. Yeah, widely regarded as one of the best props Ireland has ever seen. Please welcome Paul Wallace. Wally, great to have you with us. Great to be here. I'll tell you what. Yeah, uh, one of the greatest props of all I time. Isn't I that think lovely? my mother wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Like, whenever I see Wally, like, and it's it's crazy to think about the Lions, living with the Lions video, to like 20, it's 25 years ago. 97, you were a part of that squad. Yeah. Like, uh, does it kind of pinch you to go back to that, to think that it's 25 years, but it was such an epic mm. time for rugby? Yeah, well, Martin Johnson arranged a, a reunion during the summer, okay. which um, was, uh, unfortunately, we've had two deaths this year from that squad, uh, Tommy Smith. Uh, yeah. died just before the reunion and uh, Doddy Weir obviously recently which was more, much publicised so uh, it, it was a bit of a sad time but uh, it was you know a celebration of their lives as well and a, and a great time 25 years I tell you it goes quickly half yeah. a lifetime and uh, just like that uh, but absolute wonderful time and uh, so all great pals there It's yeah. very sad 25 years on like you mentioned Doddy there and obviously we've been looking at images of him mm. Uh, you know, from the Lions tour, from so many things. Like, look at him. What a mountain of a man. What are your memories of him? Because he would have been more senior when you were in that 97 tour. Yeah, he was only a couple of years older, but he'd broken onto the scene very young with Scotland. Uh, 
just an absolute character. I, there's a very famous clip with Living With Lines where they, they come in and they're trying to give us a bit of, uh, you know, it's amateur days. We didn't know how to handle the press that well. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sort of press guru throws a question to him. Doddy Weir, you're seen out at three in the morning, you know, uh, drinking in a bar before a game. Uh, how do you, how do you, you know, you're throwing this question, what do you do? He just goes, mistaken identity. <laughs> 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 My father wasn't sure, you know, and he literally liked that, but he, he just had a wit. And even in his latter days, instead of the reunion where he could, you know, barely speak, he's in the wheelchair. He could still have a, a glass of wine or two through a straw, but um, he... Uh, you know, his eyes were still dancing. You know, he's, he's the, the devilment in the eyes were just, you know, everywhere you went, he just lightened up a room. And the after dinner speaking circuit, you know, which is quite a lot of characters from that tour, but Doddy would just be there and he would steal the show every single time. And just one of, one of the people and a very, very humble guy as yeah. well. Uh, it just, and you could see the outpouring of support when he passed. Mm. I mean, motor neuron disease, mm. such a horrific illness. But the amount of money he raised uh, by campaign, fighting right to the last moments of his life is it's I mean it's it's an inspirational almost yeah and the awareness he, yeah. he rose as well and uh, you know I, I, I it's, it's fantastic to have that legacy mm. I think daddy was sort of his uh, commentary was it's great to live through your wake you know and, and to be a part of it uh, because it's been you know you, you're you're given one to two years I was sort of with him about a I'd say a couple of weeks after he got the diagnosis, I just happened to be working with him and uh, found out. And uh, then he kept it all under wraps before they went to Lions Tour yeah. uh, down in New Zealand with his family and then, then announced it all. But six years later, six. it's phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. unbelievable. Yeah, um, but he, you know, he fought it. He's, uh, you know, strong, such a strong character. Uh, and, and God rest him, you know, a, what a fantastic, fantastic fella. And you know him from that tour back in 19... Well, you weren't originally meant to be on that. You were called up. No, no. After was... another Limerick fella had a, had a bit of an issue. Yeah, politics, we'll say. Selection <laughs> politics. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, we, the last game of the season, we were playing against uh, Scotland and we lost in Murrayfield. We were favoured to win. And Tom Smith, who was a, an unheard of, uh, who, who we mentioned earlier, who also passed away, to Tom actually got on the tour, surprisingly, and I thought I was going. And next thing, I wasn't picked as well. So I like to think I played Tommy onto it by mm -hmm. playing so badly against Scotland. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it actually worked out in my favour because you had a real... Uh, you know, point to prove. And I had two players who played in the series before, Jason Leonard and Di Young, who'd, uh, who were the stars of their mm. previous two lines tours. So it was a competitive place, but uh, yeah, a little chip on the shoulder. And I can imagine. Hurts. I, we, we see these behind the scenes documentaries are everywhere now. You th like, think of Drive to Survive in Formula yeah. One, you think of All or Nothing, all the football teams and rugby teams, whatever else. But that Living with the Lions, for anybody who hasn't seen it, like yeah. I still think it's my favourite behind the scenes because it was so raw yeah. back in the... It was oh, probably the first team to do that. And you could see, like, they were filming out in the beers. or film, yeah. Like, I'd say, it was and just... There was no holes barred on it. There was a lot cut from that as well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. yeah, you know, there's a court session one, which is actually quite very funny, and uh, it, it, but and there's some great clips, and it went... Then that was only the start, but then it was cameras out for the rest of the court session. OK, so, right, OK. So it was great fun. Everyone came from the amateur era, and... Um, no one was media trained there. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone was just very, very natural. People were just unaware of the camera. Now there's a few guys like John Bentley and uh, nice. that who, who were real characters who, who did like the camera. Um, but you, know, you need, you need yeah. those characters on, on a tour. And on that, you know, at that amateur time as you're moving in towards professionalism and going on these tours in the Southern Hemisphere, it was Warren Gatland. So, like we do associate <laughs> the Welsh team and the Irish team with an awful lot of fake tan, right? The Irish team, no, but the was, Welsh team, was yeah. it was it Warren well, Gatlin that said to ye, lashing yeah. on lads? Well, well it, was, it was your your team, the Ospreys, yeah, wasn't exactly. it? You, you yeah, are, they, they, they had, a, yeah, but, but they, yeah, they had some good product there. We, we, Warren <laughs> Gatlin <laughs> came in. Yeah, no, this is this is what happened with us. When Gatty came in, we, we our first game was against France. We should have beaten them in Paris, which was, you know, it, it was the last minute try for, for them to, to win the game. And it was seen as a big success. And Gatty was quite confident on the back of it. And the night before we flew out, he went... Uh, uh, guys, I'm, you know, I've been playing down in Waikato in New Zealand and when, you know, Welsh, Irish teams come over, they look pale, they don't look intimidating, where the Australians, South Africans are tanned and athletic looking and, you know, physically dominant looking and I'm uh, just putting it to you, fake tan. So... <laughs> 
Oh, we wow. just went, looked at each other, and he said, well, it's up to yourselves now, guys, but whatever you like to do. So he said, uh, Ralla, Paddy O'Reilly are a great bag man, uh, but Paddy isn't the fella you'd send out to get enough fake tan for 35 lads for a Can't month. And Ralla back with, with an orange tub on. of goo. Yeah. <laughs> Only two people put it on, two of the most unlikely people, uh, Paddy Johns, who's just because he was captain, <laughs> and Trevor Brennan. And uh, they ended up flying in, arriving in Cape Town the next morning. They get up and they're two six foot six and Palumpas walking <laughs> off the plane, it was, uh, it was quite hysterical I just think it's looking. amazing. Have you ever done it? Have you ever done tan. fake tan? No, but I used to be... Like... Lads, have we... Has Tommy done fake tan? Can we no. see... Look at those hands there now, Tommy. I've those got a hands. feeling the fake tan. Can we see a close-up of those There's hands no at all? Tan those hands at all. There's a bit of, oh, I think someone's fake tan is rubbed off. I was just back from my holiday. Oh, were there, you, so yeah? yeah? Nothing on you, no fingers, you didn't get any tan it's on the fingers, filter. no? It's a filter. You get these filters on phones oh, nowadays. Oh, but that's a professional shot. That oh, was no, a that professional was modelling off, shot. Taken off someone's phone. I don't know sure what Sure it was. He's done. Well. Fake tan, yeah? <laughs> I think it's fake tan. It's the, fake tan. Yeah, definitely. Well, what about Gatland? Because Gatland is now back into the Welsh setup. And Ireland play Wales. I think it's first game in the Six Nations as well. I mean, with Ireland going so well in the autumn, do you think that, you know, he'd love nothing better to cause an upset at the top of the Six Nations, wouldn't he? Yeah, you were talking about chips on the show. Yeah. He still has one about <laughs> Ireland and how, <laughs> how he finished up. Um, and he loves to stir it up. It'll be more entertaining Six Nations with Gatti there. Uh, for Welsh rugby, I'm not sure if they have the players now. Maybe it's back to the future going with Gatland. It might be a quick fix. Um, uh, certainly, it didn't go too well for them over November. Yeah. Uh, they haven't been going particularly well. But Ireland are at such a level now, I, I would think you know it would be a complete mm. disaster to lose to yeah. that Welsh team where they are at this stage. So Gatti's got a lot to do, mm. but... Uh, he, he's, he's got that hard edge and he tends yeah. to get the best out of some teams, especially Wales. Yeah. Um, with all, you know, we always, and you've been very kind over the years, certainly to chat to us about rugby and when, when, when stuff is on. But, you know, life after rugby is, is there, you know, you all have to go off and do different yeah. things. I got saddled with this fella. But Stuck. you've you've done loads of different things and very involved with charity work as well. But you've got a brand new, go on, lash it out there. Come on, can we yeah. see it? What's Where this? Where is it? What's this? This is to get me He's through the morning. morning. <laughs> so that he can well, deal with me without well, I thought, I thought this was going to get me through the morning, but actually yeah. it's perfect means I can drive home as well. You can, indeed. What are yeah, you up yeah. to? Yeah, no, uh, well, I've been involved John in Ross. property since I finished, but we've done to another venture during the year. We set up a company, Natlo, which is sort of uh, importing its all-natural low-sugar drinks. So there's a botanical drink that's called... Drink. That's more like Aperol Spritz, because I know you'd like an Aperol Spritz now, <laughs> uh, with tonic, and yeah. it's, it's zero sugar, zero chemicals, all-natural. And no alcohol. antioxidant. It's got antioxidants. That's but there's no alcohol. alcohol. Zero. Not, but you know not, not no alcohol, zero, which means there's never any alcohol in it. And it's got uh, honey, orange honey bush, which is uh, uh, found in South Africa, botanical, which is antioxidant. So it's actually good for you. So if you do have a couple of glasses of wine, you can have a glass of that. But as to well. be fair, it, it kind of follows yeah. the way the rugby trends are going now. There's yeah. not the drinking that there was and, and the culture that there was in the past. Mm. And actually, this zero percent alcohol, like it is the way. Leading into Christmas as well. Yeah, it's things kind of, it is. Things are are, are go, like I actually enjoy going out now and having a zero zero beer or yeah, whatever you do. else yep. yeah. because it means you can have the crack but also be able to drive home if you need to well as I say and you're working the next day yeah. as well that, especially with your start in the morning it, it works out well uh, the low sugar thing is a big uh, big thing for, yeah. for me as well as where as yeah. I see it going and you know the artificial sweeteners preservatives and the long term effects they have so there's uh, another range Pura we're looking to bring out which is sodas and kids juices and just being you know, very low sugar because uh, I have two five-year-old twins and I tell you what, <laughs> oh, you need the it. less yeah. the sugar, the better. You know, those sugar rushes, <laughs> I just had it at the weekend. So the, the well, quicker we get that in the market, the you better. You have the, the alcohol-free gin as well and, of course, and the, the tonic water and yeah, everything else as well. tonic oh. as well, again, which we've uh, all natural and uh, the light one is the lightest on the market as well, Barker and Quinn. Uh, so that and that You've together. got a soul. 22 Look at calories, that. you're oh, sorted. He's got You'll a be soul. We're going to be in the kitchen next, so that's exactly what I'm going to be having. Paul Wallace, thank you so much for joining Cheers. us this morning. Thank you. Thanks. Inspired by nature, powered by light. Beko Harvest Fresh sponsors cookery on Ireland AM. Oh, you're very welcome back. We're in the kitchen now with Jack O'Keefe, who's cooking up a fussy festive starter. That is the plan, Jack. What are we doing? We're doing some awesome goat cheese tarts. Yum. Lovely. Similar enough to a volivant, but without the sauce. Okay. Good, the confusion what do you mean without the sauce? So, Joe, your volivant is like that 
tacky thing from the late 90s that you only don't, ever seem to see at weddings. Don't the slag a volavant. Oh, my God. It's like one of my guilty pleasures. It's the pastry. Be, I love it. Anything the, with pastry is good. And that corn floury, gloopy white sauce that has never seen a drop of cream. Just my locals are doing volavants and chicken. again, and I get them every time. But the mushrooms, though, I don't like oh, yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms and see. the bacon. Oh, <laughs> so I prefer volavant. this, Jack. With Whatever this, we're going to make a volavant case, and I'm going to pop goat cheese into it. What we're going to start off with is some some uh, puff paste from the freezer section in your supermarket. Roll it out, defrost it obviously, roll it out into a sheet like so, and then just fold yeah, it keep over. Keep it in a fridge though, I found. Because yeah. I let mine get to a bit hot and I couldn't get it off the paper. If you leave it defrost, well, you can leave it defrost at room temperature for about an hour, but if yeah. you leave it there any longer, it'll start to sweat and get sticky. Like you can see yeah. here now from sitting in the studio, it gets sticky and it, it'll be a disaster. Oh, it's a disaster, yeah. Right? Once you fold it over in half, that just makes the paste a little bit thicker. Get a big cookie cutter, and cut fully through. Okay. Wait, now, this is the problem with it being sticky. You've got a double one. And then pop again. And then get another one a size down that's roughly about the same size as your goat's cheese. Oh. Do a little indent. Don't go all the way through. That will allow it to rise up on the sides, like a volivant or like a pizza crust or something along those lines. Pop your goat's cheese discs into the centre. Just these cut to about a centimetre. Uh -huh. You get these in the supermarket as well, or you can kind of go to your local farmer's market, find a lo nice local cheese maker, get that cheese. And why have you doubled them? Why is just, just to make, to make you see when the ones I prepared earlier, they're okay. just big, chunky, thick. Um, look, it's, it's me, right. like, it's all about being bougie. And this is it, that's, that's... Obviously, you've got the, the sauce and stuff to go in it, but would That's you stick it. it into the oven like that, almost? Straight away, but before you put it into the oven, just give it a few little pricks of a fork, like so. Just kind of helps the air get into the pastry. Pop that on it. Into an oven at 220, 220 degrees Celsius for between 15 and 18 and minutes. And no egg yolk or anything like that? No egg yolk, nothing, because the cheese will melt and cover it anyway. Okay. Right? While they go into the oven, going to grab a saucepan, we're going to make a really nice, sticky, sweet sauce to go with this, to cut through the goat cheese. Put your sauce on a medium to high heat. In on top of that then, we're going to add some uh, Chinese plum sauce. Lovely. Or, if you can't find it, hyacin is perfectly fine. And I know oh. you're thinking to yourself, that's a weird one now to go on top of goat's cheese. Yeah. But wait, you taste it. It okay. really complements it. But now, the beauty of Christmas time is the supermarkets are full of condiments, and I'm obsessed with condiments. Me too. We have two shelves in our fridge, our little fridge, and it's just condiments. My wife it drives her crazy. Because it's the only section of the supermarket I want to go into. <laughs> Between that and all the different herbs and yeah. rums and all that sort of stuff. Love you it. Can, you can never have enough condiments. But then I have, I have a whole jar or two jars of plum sauce that I've used once and it's just sitting <laughs> there. there. It's not used again. But this go is... There tart. you go. Perfect. In on top of that, I put a spoon of brown sugar and now a spoon <laughs> of balsamic vinegar. Is it a man thing? I don't know. I love it, yeah. Yeah, he just might spell it definitely loves. Loves having all the condiments. Oh, it's like collections of chili sauces. Just in case I can well. marinate. Yeah. If I need to marinate yeah. someday, have any amount of different and you know those, sauces to put on them. Those stocking filler Christmas presents that oh, yeah, men are always given. Them, yeah. And it's like a big packet of multiple different types of chili sauces. <laughs> Between that and deodorant, sure, that's it. Keep the lads that's happy. Over the links. Yeah. If I ever need to, I'm going to put Bring that down in your grave. So is that it? Just plum sauce and some, uh, was it balsamic? That? Yeah. And that's right. it. And I have some toasted, kind of, that I've roasted off in the dry sauce, and some walnuts. Oh, and just, just crumble them up. Okay. Now you can use any kind of peanut, you know, walnut, uh, pecans are, would be lovely with this as well. Walnuts are kind of half healthy as well, so you're... Ah, you can tell yourself a little that, bit of healthiness. That is... Um, so here are the ones I've prepared That earlier. is a smell, like there is a smell off that sauce, like it is, it's strong. It is quite Asian, yeah. yeah. And it's quite sharp it's as well strong. from the balsamic yeah. boiling. So look at those. Look at, look at how they puffed up, the goat's cheese has sunken down. As well, you notice I left the rind on and it kind of... That yes. puts a bit of behaviour, a bit of manners on the cheese, stops it from going down over it. Delicious. Wow. Right? Get that syrupy sauce. And get your drizzle on. Oh yes, pour, just drizzle pour around. loads on. Get loads on there. <laughs> and just still, if you ever need to emergency marinate anything, that's all that's going to be going around in my head. Listen, you're if you're looking crunch. for a Christmas Tommy, present for me, there you go. Tell me at ten nice o'clock at night. I need to emergency marinate. <laughs> I get you socks. Yeah, Do you for want tomorrow, condiments? For tomorrow morning, for you get it marinated for the next day. Look at and that. And that is it. Look oh. at those. And we have some drizzled, some nice Sorry. fresh leaves <laughs> around it with the walnuts. And like, oh, if you're having, Jack. this is the perfect recipe. If you're having friends over in that weird gap between Christmas Look Day and New Look Year's, that. nice bad. bottle of wine, some goat's cheese, big platter. Yum. I'm gonna take mine. Thank you very much. And you can do a joint version of that as well. Like, you could keep the whole thing square, and you could do five or six little discs running oh. around it. You could pop some. The goat's onto cheese it. is just melting. It's oh, so gooey. Love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. No. Oh. Pastry, goat's cheese, and sauce.
Can not beat it? Mwah. Yum. Jack well keep. No problem. Too hot, can't talk, but look, <laughs> so like absolutely delicious. Nailed I'll it. do this then. Have you heard of volunteerism? We'll explain all after the break, after we've eaten everything. Mm. Okay. Inspired by nature, powered by light. Becco Harvest Fresh sponsors cookery on Ireland AM. Welcome back. Now, do you want to go on a holiday and do good for a community? Volunteerism could be for you, but is there a downside? Well, to tell us what it is, because mm -hmm. I have no idea, is travel writer Tom Branagh. Good morning to you. Hi, guys. Morning, Tom. Are you with us? Yeah, great to be here. A volunteerism. What, what is, is it? it? <laughs> you're volunteering and you're a tourist. There you go. There we go. There Look at that. Okay. We worked that out. Yeah, so I guess, you know, in, in the travel industry, there's always these kind of gimmicky portmanteaus, glamping and this and that. So volunteerism is kind of a late, um, a more recent take on international volunteering, which maybe people are maybe typically more uh, familiar with where you head down to maybe South Africa or Thailand for a couple of weeks or a couple of months to help out at a wildlife park or an orphanage and what have you. So volunteerism nowadays is more of a take on that where you can, even in the West, so if you go to the States or Norway or Greece on your holidays, you can work in an aspect of tourism, like maybe helping at a, a, um, a national park or um, okay. so doing a bit of good. I guess nowadays, you know, we thought before the pandemic that, you know, when flight shame came in, we wouldn't be tra flying as much and all the kind of the Greta Thunberg effect. That hasn't really happened. We're back, mm -hmm. we're flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're busting for road. And I guess as a travel editor, I'm I'm kind of, you know, trying to, I'm, I'm not giving up my flying shoes just yet, but I'm like, how can I at least travel when I'm doing something that has a slightly less negative impact? Is there is there an element there then of, you know, the white saviour complex that we've all been talked about? Like, you know, if you're going somewhere, helping out, you know, like a lot of people will go to to Eastern European countries yes. from Ireland, you know, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the wake of Chernobyl or whatever, and everything like that. But recently, in recent years, there's a lot of the white saviour seeing white people in communities in Malawi, for example, and being like, all right, calm down. That's yeah, um, neo-colonialism, they apparently yeah. call it. And there is that like kind of slightly jarring optics of, you know, white Europeans going down for like photo ops with, you know, African kids and, you know, primary schools or whatever. But I mean, beyond the optics, if they're reputable programs, which they are, you know, there's if you find a good agency where you do your research and you're not just going down and, and, and playing with kids, I guess it's always good to find an interest, whether if you've an education background or a conservation background, or sometimes you can just fit in. When I went back in my 20s, I worked in a breastfeed breastfeeding clinic in Cape Town. So I was kind of, um, you know, uh, weighing the kids at the beginning and cutting, I guess, asking, acting as a middleman where I was cutting the cues for the actual doctors and nurses. So it had some a kind so of a... doing good oh, that's stuff. good. Well, well, why, is, why is it a negative to no, it no, yeah, whenever yeah. you're well, actually you going hear, and there, there are so helping. many, you hear so many shady accounts and it's always, I guess, the bad news stories that will kind of um, um, emerge and, um, you know, with, I guess, child protection issues and, you know, you're always paying, I guess, mm -hmm. one thing with volunteers and volunteerism is, you know, to do your research, but also ask how much, a, you know, how much of a program fee you're paying. Because even with like nonprofits and NGOs, there's all, they can you, you're often charged a, a chunk of change. So you got to kind of figure out what, yeah. which ones you're doing. But there can be volunteerism here in Ireland. I know of places that people come to farms in Ireland. You mentioned Norway working in parks. You've talked about people going to New York for volunteerism. Yeah. Like there's all there's loads of different types. Yeah, for example, I mean, even just on my Instagram during the weekend, I saw the um, the burn that who are always ahead of the game in terms of ecotourism, something popped up about Gregan's Hotel and they have a new um, rewilding programme like we were just talking about a while ago where you can, um, they are replanting burn spruce, I think. So that's a cool community effort where, you know, we're saying that like volunteerism uh, can begin at home. I went to um, Yosemite National Park in um, last spring and they, um, uh, that's a really cool example of how if you're in the States in your holidays, yeah. you can chip in on a national park even on a day basis. Now I stayed stayed for a week but like you're what like you do? 
I uh, chopped, I chopped spruce, like, I know, I, I we went. So are you on your holidays? <laughs> or, well, I think, you, you know what, like... it was, it was like one week, but it felt like a month because you're doing so, so much. Like every day we were, we were with like the MPS park rangers. You get up early in the morning after camping and we like repurposed fallen cedar trees to make guardrails so they wouldn't have to import them from Idaho anymore. And we re, re, rerouted a Native American, um, a, a hiking trail around a Native American village. Oh yeah, there I am. But, uh, so um, Looking it was it, like a man of the wild, oh, wow. Tom. Oh, that's me already. Believable. Yeah, wood. But, uh, like yeah so it was an incredible oh. um, experience. And, you know, and that was like, I mean, it was a thousand dollars I paid to do that. To, I mean, on the ground. Hold on, beside... you, so why did you have to pay if you're volunteering? Well, I mean, they because they're they're feeding you, they're watering you, you know. So like it was like an all all you can eat out in the forest. So, um, but like that's 150 bucks a day. So you're staying on the most iconic national parks in the world. You're you've you've all you can. What would you get for 120? So if, if somebody was to come into Ireland to do it. Like, uh, there's obviously places all Ireland, all over Ireland that w would be willing to bring people in who are volunteering to do a bit of work. Yeah, I don't but, think there's... I'm not, I'm not sure about our, our national park services. Oh, really? I, would, I, I mean, I could be wrong on this. I'm, I'm more... My expertise is probably so more overseas. Actually, but people pay to go and actually work. Yeah. yeah. Fair well, play to them. Yeah, volunteering. I mean, it's this new concept. We, we well, exactly. Altruism. Well, volunteering is something, but you don't have to pay to volunteer. Well, I guess you're not paying to volunteer. You're paying for your food. You're paying for like a program fee. I mean, some <laughs> guy in like Virginia has to like sign up all the programs and what have you. So, but that's the beauty of that. Now, that same program that I went with um, Conservation um, International, they're called. Now, for example, they also have UNESCO programs in Scotland or in, it, it, in yeah. Italy. But often, for example, in that case, you're paying for the, their American programmers to fly to Scotland. So it's wise to do an American one with them and then maybe cut out the middleman if you're doing a European program. Oh. Do you know what I mean? So And is there ways to find out if you want if you want to do it, if you want to be like, okay, I want to go travelling, but I don't want to feel bad about my flight. I want to do something good when I'm there. What? How can we find out more about it? Is there loads of places online? Yeah, there's a bit, a bit of like GVI, um, Global Volunteering International, they're slightly, affiliate, not, may not affiliate, they, they work very well with the UNSHG, Sustainability. Of, it's some, I can't remember the acronym, but in terms of their sustainability program. Okay. Um, processes in the in the UN, so they're very mindful of all these criteria and kind of carbon footprints, and have meaningful, impactful programs on the ground. Definitely, like do your research. I mean, don't go to some like elephant sanctuary in Thailand where, like, you know, at break time they're suddenly you know doing painting with elephants. You know, have you seen those things? Yes, or, you I know, have. Sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so, like, research is a, a big factor. Otherwise, you're just going to raise questions. You'll get cancelled. <laughs> cancelled. <laughs> I was cancelled a long time ago. I know. Tom Brannock, thank you so nice much you for guys. joining us. I love those Pleasure. pictures. Big mountainy yeah. man there. It's all fantastic. Just take no better angle. There we go. There <laughs> we'll we go. be back with you in Ireland Day very shortly. <laughs>you very welcome back. Now we've got an awful lot of text messages coming through about a couple of different topics, but I think the most popular one really is, so the CCPC, the Consu Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, that one in four people are, yep. this Christmas are going to be going out and finding, borrowing money, basically to fund their Christmas. And it's really interesting to see the amount of text messages, mm -hmm. people saying that, that they kind of agree with it as well. Yeah, because we were talking about the buy now, pay later schemes that an awful lot of places um, that an awful lot of places uh, offer now. Matt says, I think it's great that places are now offering buy now, pay later. We recently bought our first home and we've been able to fully furnish it using this service. Otherwise, we'd be sleeping on the floor. Yeah, Anne said, this is interesting, she used loan sharks in the past. She would have been lost one year in particular without them. Interest was high, but they helped me out over Christmas. I paid them back uh, weekly. So, I mean, this new system, it's not new, people taking on credit and having to, to fund their Christmas. I, know, I don't think I've ever heard anyone saying, so I love loan sharks. Loan sharks, I <laughs> know, interesting, fair and play. Fair play yeah. hey, what about Molly? Mm. With the cost of living crisis at the minute, it's so hard to predict what bills are going to come in each month. And the variance from month to month has never been so stark. So the idea of potentially getting myself into further financial trouble down the line is enough to make me stay mm. away from credit cards and other forms of buy now, pay later. The problem is on all these websites, it's all these, you have PayPal credit, you have Klarna, you've put, it's, it's so easy to just defer payments and just, oh, I'll worry about that later down the line. 
True, isn't that what a credit card always was? You know, yeah. let's get, and don't but, pay it back on time, we'll get some interest. Well, this is uh, Mary Mead said these online apps offering kids the opportunity to split payments seems very dangerous. The parents will pick up the bill. There sure, you go, Mary. picking up the bill anyway. Uh, thank you so much for yeah, all absolutely. of those messages. We After the break, it. from the Lair to Line of Duty, Quaku Fortune will be here to talk about her rising star. Is right, and we'll also be joined by Galway Girl Turn West and Pearl Aoife Mulholland. We'll be here to chat about their latest project together. We'll talk to you shortly. Ireland AM have teamed up with Tesco, who are standing up for joy this Christmas. They want to help customers have a joyful and affordable Christmas with their crowd-pleasing Christmas dinner options, like their whole Irish bronze free-range turkeys and finest hams, full of flavour, and a great value option for large families. Sides like their finest red cabbage with port and cranberries, creamed mashed potato or potato gratin will hit the spot. For something a little different, Tesco's finest Irish Angus Carvery rib roast or a rolled lamb joint could provide a welcome twist on tradition. Together with Tesco, we're giving you the chance to win a €1,000 shopping voucher to spend in-store to help with your big Christmas shop and beyond. For your chance to win, just tell us, which would you normally get inside a Christmas cracker? Is it A, a recipe, or B, a joke? To enter, call 1550-999-200 or text PRIZE to 57199. Best of luck. Our next guests are two Irish actors who have worked with huge stars such as like Paul Meskel, mm -hmm. Jerry Springer, Adrian Dunbar. I've know. never heard of any of them. I mean, who are they? Anyway, please they? welcome actors Ethan Mulholland <laughs> and Kwaku Fortune. It's lovely to have you My both here. Thank Good you morning. So much. Good Thanks morning. for coming. We love a bit of a name drop on oh. Ireland AM. <laughs> and when we first saw you, Aoife, it was how do you solve a problem like Maria? It was that yes. show hosted by Graham Norton, yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber uh -huh. sitting in his big throne. Yeah. Know, what was that, that was... experience like? Oh, I, it was probably the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my life. You know, auditions are tough enough and to do it live in front of how many million people for eight weeks. Yeah, they definitely put us through our paces, but uh, it got me to where I wanted to be. So I'm very thankful <laughs> of it. But Because uh, that's uh, the thing, you and Je like Jesse Buckley did it as yeah, well. And did. because it was like, was your love rather than going, I want to be a pop star, it was West End. Yeah. Yeah, it was well, it was it was my first audition out of drama school and I knew it was reality TV and I actually did not want to do it at all. But I thought, you know, I'll do it for the experience. First audition and myself and my friend Abby Finley, we just got through the rounds and we kept getting, you know, down to the last hundred, down to the last 20. And then suddenly we found ourselves in the last 10. We were kind of looking at each other going, this wasn't really supposed to happen. <laughs> we were supposed to just go for an audition. And yeah, and it was just it was such a good platform. And uh, yeah, that's it. Got, I mean, got push, me to where I want to. Pushing outside your comfort zone is a, totally. is a good thing as well. Quick, yeah. even from your point of view, like we're talking about auditions and how mm. nerve wracking stuff they are, but like, from, was it normal people you did the audition? They actually had to create a, a separate role for you? <sighs> yeah, essentially, because I was up for a Gareth first. That was like Marianne's first uh, love in Trinity or whatever. I got a call back for that. And then in the callback, like I'd met Lenny before and stuff, and in the callback, I was a bit nervous, like, audition for him and stuff and I kind of messed it up a little bit I didn't obviously get the part so then they had kept bringing me up for like these day player parts like oh they've got you like this little one liner here this one this one this one and I was like when like I think I'm just lost the boat I'm just not going to be in this bloody show all my mates were in it like I was like that, that, that's it done and then as you got on to me he's like they're, they're, they might they might give you the role of Philip and I was like Philip who the hell's Philip so I was like looking through the book trying to find out and he's mentioned once like they all go to a big party at some guy called Philip's house yes like, okay and then oh Philip like, can throw a party yeah, he, yeah. Oh, that's good I can do that yeah, yeah. I've experience in that yeah. uh, so she's like they're going to write you a small part and originally it was only supposed to be like four days and I ended up being there for like ten days but it was great and yeah. like Lenny's amazing he kind of lets you improv and it got yeah. bigger just because of being on set with him. So. Because Lenny Abrams, obviously, like, you know, this was the lockdown yeah. phenomenon, yeah. Kwaku. Mm -hmm. And you were one of nine from the Lear Academy. Yeah. Like, when you said all, all your friends. mates yeah, exactly. were in it, you're yeah. like, no joke, like, Paul, <laughs> all the lads miss from the Lear you know? Academy. Yeah. So, like, if you hadn't, like, you're a Lear head, that's what you are now. Yeah. If you hadn't gotten it, there would have been some slagging in the I WhatsApp know, group, yeah. Well, that was the fear, yeah. I didn't want to get left behind. You were know? you the cool kids or normal people? We were. Because you all knew each other. Everyone was really cool, to be honest. But, yeah, we were the cool kids. Whatever you say, you met, what did you do wrong in the, the audition? Is there anything that's true? Is there anything I, 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 looking did? back, I don't know. It's, I think it was just nerves. I, I was a bit, I was just nervous. You know, when you're not fully in the flow of something, 
it, it can get a bit on top yeah. of you. And I think maybe being in a room with Lenny auditioning mm. in front of him because I like, have him up there, you know, I just got a bit nervous. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, of course, because you're in Line of Duty, another massive show, season yeah. six. Like, yeah. Even auditioning for something like that as well, it's like it's so intimidating. That was grand because was, I was I got I got it off the tape. I, I didn't have to meet anyone, so just oh. I did my tape and then I got cast as like deadly. <laughs> just rocked up. Were you hard. interested in it at that stage? Oh I, yeah, big fan. I watched like Lenny everything. Jesus. I absolutely loved so it. So shouting yeah. when you got on step. Yeah. Who is H? Who is H? Yeah, who is yeah, H? Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> who's going on? Adrian. Adrian Dunbar. Tell me what's happening here. The... That's what we all wanted yeah. to do. But Eva, like with you again, like you have started opposite people like Adina. Menzel in Chess, that wow. huge yeah. musical. Yeah. And Jerry Springer in Chicago. Jerry Springer. Go to. Yeah, Jerry. Go Jean. Oh my God, Jerry. Um, he was just, you know, my idea of him before he came into the show was so different to what he is in real life. He's such a lovely, gentle, generous, quite introverted man, actually. So far removed from what wow. you see on, yeah. oh, you know, Jerry, Jerry. Yeah. And he, he'd always turn to me and he'd say, I'm so lucky to be here with you people. I'm so lucky. Like he was so humble um, for a man who was, you know, he was a trained lawyer, married yeah. in Chicago at one stage. Then of course the, the huge the the talk TV show, show which you know, became a musical. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Springer the musical or the opera. Or the something. opera, yeah. But yeah, lovely, lovely man. Loved um, working with him. So you were, were you living in London at that stage, and then you yes. moved back to Do to Dublin yeah. again? Yes. Uh, yeah. Are you prefer like was it difficult? that period in London or what made you? No, it was, oh, I loved London, like 10 years there. Um, young, single, working in the West End, like an amazing period of my life. Then I met my husband and we had a couple of kids and we kind of moved out to the suburbs and it just, it loses its sparkle a bit, London, when, when that happens. And then of course you're craving family and yeah. that support. And then I became pregnant with my third child, and I said, "Right, that's it. Need to go home, oh, be near the family." To so. have a bit of like, because Quickie, you live? Are you living in Dublin all the time? Yeah, so I'm in between Ballyferm and Inchicore. Inchy Fermis. Inchy Fermis, yeah. that's your yeah. thing. <laughs> I'm only like 15 minutes You're travelling between the two. I mean, the commute is I even crazy. need a taxi. I could have walked here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how, how is that then? Because, as you said, I know it was COVID times and different. Mm. You can self-tape now. Like, it's, yeah. you can really audition for whatever you want Which from wherever great. you are. Yeah, it's really opened yeah. it up, you yeah. know. But I think, like, I'll say that's brilliant too, but it, it also... Like you're kind of shooting in the dark sometimes with stuff. You're like, in terms of choices, you're just kind of throwing it out there. Sometimes it's nice yeah. to be in the room and have the director, if you're not getting worried, because gotcha. then you but like have the director go, oh, change that. Then you can yeah. vibe with them. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. So both. you're now involved, you're on, on stage mm. with PF as well. Like, but you're not really a singer or dancer, are I'm you? I'm not at all, no. He so is, he is. I'm just <laughs> that he is. But your roles, I mean, you're playing Marcel in this as well. I was told I wouldn't be singing, but anyway, that's the deal. <laughs> well, what? The play is called Piaf, yeah. so I'm yeah, assuming I mean, it's about Edith Piaf, yeah, right? There should be music, right? One would yeah. think. Like, yeah. one would think I'd Would you just send the tape in? <laughs> is there, is there and he was so good, he got it. So is good. there, all oh, right, well, I'm sitting in front of Marlene Dietrich, which I can yes. see the blonde thing going on. I'm loving your hair as well, the 1940s <laughs> caught God. into it. What PF I assume is about the life of Edith PF yes. from yeah. how yes. she started, mm. you know, singing exactly. on the side of the street yes. to one of the most famous women in the world. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's it's like her. It's a, it documents her troubled life and Bless the her. the ups and downs of what it takes to be a performer, and it's all her music throughout. You know her like no regrets and yeah. uh, him de l'amour, yeah. and oh, it's just amazing. Can we played the song. Can we, can we? Do we have it there? Because <laughs> I was trying to try no. to remember. What, yeah. <laughs> Quaker, will you sing it? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do an off key version. Who are you version, playing yeah. in it? Who are you playing in it, Quaker? So, so I'm playing Marcel, the, the boxer, Marcel Sedan. So he, he was so the middleweight champion. Marlene in, was in love, or not Marlene, yeah, that he was, was in love, love with. with. Yeah, and yes. he died. So basically, he was the he was the middleweight champion in 48. Yes. Then he lost to Lamada in 49, dislocated his shoulder, and he was supposed to come back to fight him and she wanted him to come back earlier. He had a fear of flying. So he's gonna get like the slow boat and she's like, no, get the, get a plane. And in that plane, he, he died. He died, so, died. So I think, yeah. yeah, her life was all, there was like, that was a big turning point in her life because she really felt like she really loved him. And then when yeah. he went, yeah. it was like, 
Damn she loved girl. she loved the men though, especially the young, good looking yeah. men. Yeah. Okay. She, loved she did. Oh, but sorry, are you sorry. singing? Sorry, can yeah. you get an singing answer? So you are singing. I bit of choral singing, like I don't have any numbers. He <laughs> doesn't have any numbers. He's singing, he's great singing. Well, so he's great. Well himself as well. <laughs> thanks, 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 yeah. Listen, that's that's worth going to see. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just um, to see Quake good. I'm not doing yeah. this. All so, singing, lads. PF, it is, it's in the Gate Theatre, of course, December seventh. Uh, it's right through till January the twenty eighth mm. as well. Yes. Uh, where can people get tickets? Online, online, the gate website. online okay. the gate website. The yeah, gate it's website. all there. The one show in town that isn't a panto and people shouting, "He's behind you!" <laughs> through the whole way. There's a bit of magic though, so maybe the, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. really? oh yeah. magic! Yes, well. you're teasing us with that. <laughs> yeah. Wake of fortune and Ethan Mulholland. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, that is still to come. There's no room for failure when your fashion is tailored. Lorna Duffy has some tailoring and top tips on the catwalk. Plus, why not give the gift of a gadget this Christmas? For me, anyway. Colin Baker's got all those coming up uh, after this break. You're getting sucks. So. All this week on Ireland AM, we've teamed up with Britta to celebrate the relaunch of their recycling initiative by giving five lucky viewers the chance to win a fabulous Britta hamper and 100 euro one for all voucher. Internationally renowned for its expertise in the field of water filtration, Britta is committed to fighting single use plastic pollution, one of the biggest environmental challenges currently facing our planet. From now until the end of January, for each Britta cartridge returned to them free post for recycling, they will donate one euro to Seal Rescue Ireland to support their joint effort fighting against the damage that single-use plastic does to Irish seas and wildlife. Return details are on Britta Ireland's Facebook page or bluestone.ie. To be with a chance to win, just answer the question. What county is Seal Rescue Ireland located in? Is it A, Donegal or B, Wexford? To enter, call 1550-99091 or text GIFT to 57199. Good luck. The luck. little seals, they're so cute. Anyway, uh, sorry, uh, Lorna Duffy is here to show us something completely different, how to add uh, some tailored looks to our wardrobes. Good yes, morning, good Lorna. Morning. Good morning. It's yes. lovely to see you. We're going to start with... Um, some celebrity-inspired yes. looks, and Zendaya is These our first look. my favourite uh, A-listers. So, yeah, first off, Zendaya, I'm like, look, she's a style icon. I personally think she can do no wrong mm -hmm. when it comes to anything even remotely fashion-related. So here we are looking at two things. Firstly, the power suit. The blazer with the trousers, the combo, absolutely stunning, perfect fit, perfect tailoring. We're also looking at that pop of colour. We are seeing this similar look everywhere at Louis Vuitton. Kenzo is absolutely everywhere. So we're sticking with those two key trends for this fabulous look on Kerry this morning. So this outfit here is from the Stall Market. Love the shade of purple, mm -hmm. absolutely stunning. Such a nice tailored piece. This is sold as a set. Love that sort of wide leg trouser as well. Absolutely stunning. So this one here is a small fit. So if you're small, I would go for a medium. Um, it's also available in oh, magenta, right. royal blue, and a gorgeous shade of green as well. Lots of sizes available. But again, it's just such a so nice... So even if you're like small, them. you have to size yeah, up. Yeah, I would size up, yes. Yeah. The so wide leg trousers are nice. Yeah, like wide those. leg trousers. Again, it just really, really goes. But, you know, with that pop of colour, I feel like people think, again, for a nine to five, go with the greys and the dark colours. Go to the opposite of purple suit. Go for the pop of colour. Or obviously, if you're heading out of the weekend, it's really nice for like drinks with the girls or date nights. So there's lots you can do with it. Yeah, but definitely with um, the green jumper as well. Yeah, uh, a little knit actually underneath would be lovely. So joker. next up, our jewellery this morning is from Night and Day Jewellery. We've got some really nice glitz glam pieces uh, to jazz up our sort of festive look. We'll say it's a sort of a festive look. Really, really nice double chain necklace there. And then we have a lovely little bracelet, which we will see in a moment, that matches perfectly. Gorgeous little um, clutch as well. So this is from Murphy Shoes Bantry. Um, yeah, look at that bracelet. It's just it's anything that sparkle, matches. Isn't it? isn't it? And it ties in nicely with the necklace. So even for like a gift idea or something, really, really nice. Lovely little clutch. Again, black suede. It has that nice chain in there as well. You can throw it over if you want to go with a crossbody. Um, and then and our shoes are from uh, Murphy's Shoes as well. Nice perfect suede black straps to go with our suede black clutch. Very yeah. nice. Lovely, Lovely little look. Suits. Absolutely I've gorgeous. They're everywhere at the moment, aren't they? I Thank just you, love Kerry. A suit. Cheers. I absolutely so love a suit. Victoria Beckham. Yes. I feel like I just I talk about her nonstop. I actually can't because she can do no wrong. She can do no wrong. So here we are again looking at two different trends. Firstly, we're looking at a really nice structured, tailored jacket. Mm -hmm. A little bit of an oversized jacket as well. Well, is very much in at the minute, but also um, teaming that up with 
a nice tailor pair of pants, whether they're cigarette tr trouser or you know a wide leg structured pant. So a bit of both is a really nice combination. Again. Prada, Valentina, we're seeing it ever, so this is just lovely. That's Gorgeous. Nice absolutely color. lovely color again, yeah. on Ursula. Absolutely fabulous. So again, we're talking about that pop of colour earlier, all about injecting colour into our winter wardrobe. Absolutely stunning. This is also available in a blue, a turquoise and a pink. Lots of sizes from a small to an extra large. Oversized jacket mm. again. Just the structure and the overall look. Really, really nice piece. Uh, so sort of a Chanel vibe with our blouse as well. Love the crochet detailing again for a nine to five maybe or any sort of dressy occasion. Very, very nice. And the pants. I mean, look at the detail. I love the gold buttons, the pocket, the wide leg. I just love everything about them. Absolutely stunning. Very, very nice. Um, and again, just the subtle details. So like the gold buttons, if you wanted to kind of jazz up a little bit, yeah. really makes a difference. Um, love the little shoes, but a bit sort of, you know, designer inspired pair of shoes. Love the detailing. Again, obviously we've teamed up with um, a sort of dressy look, but again, for, you know, a Christmas party, a night out yeah. with a nice dress, something festive, really, really would be a perfect look. Next up then we have some beautiful earrings. Uh, love any sort of a hoop earring really really good price point um, and then we've teamed up the gorgeous little necklace with a hint of green to tie in with okay the, with the lovely pop of color uh, in our jacket today and then we've gone for a gorgeous little ring as well again it ties in very nicely with our pair of earrings so all about the little details to finish off lovely uh, a lot and a massive bag a fair gorgeous play little bag as well with everything in there now we're going to move on to Chloe Grace Moritz yes. for our next Love look. Love Chloe. So we're going for a slightly more casual look here. We'll see you, Miko, in a second. is a little bit um, more dressy. But here we're looking at, firstly, the blazer, the Taylor blazer, anything oversized as well, and then teaming it with a skirt. So obviously we've had our two different styles of trousers. We've had our oversized jacket, the suit. Now we're kind of going with a skirt blazer combination here. Who's so Chloe Grace Moritz? She would have been the, uh, you know, in Kick-Ass. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's my was, favorite oh, that's thing her. that she's oh, in. Yeah, she's, she's brilliant. Yeah. Right. I, I just got her, her there a second ago. I was Love like, give me one <laughs> film with her. I got it. She's brilliant. She's brilliant. So we have a beautiful blazer here from Friday's Edit. So we're going for a slightly different style. So it's a nice long line blazer. Uh, no buttons. We're leaving it open, and mm. we've got that ruched detailing on the sleeves as well. Of course, we're bringing that pop of colour in. And then we've gone for a little bit of a, a little knitwear piece um, because obviously we do want something cosy uh, in our wardrobe. I really like this. That's a nice the, top. Yeah, I like lovely? that, the no so sleeves. So I like the padded sort of detailing as well. It's quite subtle. Yeah. Really, really uh, nice. And it times, uh, ties in lovely with our um, pleated skirt as well. This is also available uh, in a pink and in a sort of a turquoisey blue. Absolutely beautiful. Love an ankle boot. Absolutely lovely. Uh, and again, the heel is high, but it's not too high. Yeah, so you're going like to be comfortable boots. in it. So comfort is key. Yeah. Really, really nice. And then we have some beautiful accessories from uh, same brand, gone for gold again. Lovely detail here, sort of interlinking um, with a bit of sparkle as well with our earrings. Absolutely stunning. Um, and again, just nice for like a gift idea as well. Mm. Just jewelry is always a nice gift idea, I think, uh, especially for Christmas. We've gone then for more beautiful gold accessories, beautiful beaded bracelet, and then we've got a gorgeous little uh, bit of sparkle with our ring as well, and this gorgeous little crossbody bag. I love this bag. It looks Lovely. so much more expensive than it is, which is what I love about it. Ford, I stunning. Yeah. It's What's really, it? really nice. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the the just with the black and cream thing going on, just mm. bringing in the wine. It's yeah. always very just handy. That it's a great idea. Bit of colour it makes such a Lovely. difference. It really does. Now what's our next look? Who's it from, Tommy? Rosamund Pike. Who's Rosamund who Pike? No she? idea. Do you not? <laughs> who is Gone she? Girl. Oh she yeah. She was in yeah, James Bond. She was I in James Bond. Pride and Prejudice. I loved her in James Bond. Yeah, yeah, me is too, it? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's totally there. Oh, okay, sorry. So she is our inspiration for Kerry's <laughs> yes. look here today. So here we are looking at firstly the oversized jacket, but also we're looking at the check print, the yeah. plaid print, hounds to print. Yes, so a bit of both. So here we have this beautiful jacket from On Trend. All about those oversized coats. We've got, I love the shade of brown. Mm, it's really lovely. nice. Obviously, you had our really bright colors, and I was sort of toning down a little bit yeah. with the browns and the creams and that kind of thing. Lovely little rib detail um, top. It's sleeveless, but again, 
just ties in nicely with that sort of neutral um, sort of vibe we're going with our look here. Very, very nice. Um, and this one here is uh, available in a small to medium and a medium to large, also available in black and then the pants. So, yeah. Plaid, check print, hands tooth. Beautiful. I think for obviously an office look, yeah. it's really, really good. But again, because it's so in at the minute, you can head off for cocktails at the weekend. It's really, really nice. It it's works. Very cool. And works again, for men it's as well. Actually, I was going to say, it's more of a man. I wouldn't. Do women wear a lot of that check as well? Yeah, yeah. I think it's lovely. Yeah. Do. Really Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful. No, really, really nice. And again, it's that sort of oversized, yeah. sort of slightly pair of pants. Really, really nice. Lovely pair of earrings. So, sort of spiral detailing um, just to jazz up and sort of finish off our look this morning. And we've gone for a nice sort of curb style chain. Really nice, which you can actually adjust at the back if you wanted to make it a little bit shorter, almost a choker style, you can actually do that as well, which is really nice to have the choice to do that. And then a lovely little bracelet to match. Lovely. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I love little boots, which I adore. Fabulous. I'm going to get a pair of those pan pants now. I just you need everything. You get a pair of those pants. Yeah. I just want Fabulous. everything. <laughs> those pants. The gifts of Julie the Holath, that is the woman in your life sorted. The woman in your life is Lorna sorted. Lorna Duffy, sorted. thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, coming up after the break, we're going to have uh, the gadgets for the man in your life. There we go. There Let's go. just keep the gender separation going on Ireland Day, and we'll talk to you shortly. Welcome back. Now, attention, everyone who loves an old gadget. Colin Baker is rounding up the top tech Me. gifts for Christmas. Colin, let's kick it off. Good morning. Christmas presents, I'll take all of them. Uh, right, uh, me too. And that's, that's kind of why I'm in the business I'm in. Yeah, tell me, the helmet. What's special I'm about a helmet? I'm hoping that this ends up being the number one this Christmas. Because on a very serious note, anyone who's on a scooter like me, mm -hmm. or an e-bike or bike, bike whatever, yeah, yeah. even a, a horse, I mean, this is for every kind of outdoor pursuit where you want to protect your noggin. What's so special about this one? But this is one that light. you actually really want to wear. Well, it does have the light, but it also has a built-in action cam on the front. Oh, so you can actually okay. record events and incidents as well. Okay. A lot of people like to do that. You've also got this clip-off visor so over like, that. Look like Maverick. Well, that's what I was kind of thinking, but um, it, it does also protect from the wind and from the sun as well. Okay. You've also got a built-in brake light. So that's a normal LED light, but as you slow down, it actually flashes so to indicate that you're slowing down and you're braking okay. so it's kind of an automatic brake light as well it's carbon structured so it's nice and light as you can feel it there yeah that's yeah, kind of one light. you can see i'm wearing that's my own one i'm wearing it all the time there's also a headset built oh, into fun. it as well so you see, can actually like, take phone calls all these through buttons it, listen on to here. your podcasts your, e your audiobooks can whatever. you use that for say you're a snowboarder or a skier yeah, or something totally. can I, you? I, I bring that skiing i do i bring that everywhere brilliant it's warm it's comfortable it's kind of one size fits all it it looks well on Tommy. And you look like Robocop. That's so yeah, like that or Maverick. That's that or it. Maverick. I, yeah. I think it's awesome. Oh, he love loves it. it. I you love it. Love it. Yeah. It's like, kind of how you want to wear. Christmas presents. So it's also gone down. That's, a, that's 149 euro okay. now. Okay. It was Muscle like 200. Gun. Next. So these, look, look, isn't it just small and cute? Tea, you're used yeah. to, you're, I think you're kind of a fan of these massage yeah, and recovery yeah, guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I certainly, because I'm sporadic in my kind of gym use, so I end up going and, and freaking out and then getting really sore. And this type of thing is great for recovery afterwards. So it's just a USB charger one, though. So it means nice you don't have to go for a massage. You can my kind of old just get it to My old one is huge. Yeah. and it uses a lot of power. Um, and of course, it is very powerful. But this one is actually, let me see if I can get it on. Oh, okay, here we go, right. Bring it up. The nice thing about this is it looks tiny and cute and portable, but I'm going to just show you. And it doesn't feel like it's doing a lot there. Oh, yeah. But check this out. Yeah. No, like no, it's, yeah, oh, no. you, won't feel, you don't feel <laughs> yeah, it, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, but no, it's, it is. it's actually really, no. put, shove that into. Hello. Your neck. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. How are you today? Just <laughs> as an just, audible uh, example of this, how strong it is. Can this do a workout for I'm my not neck. sure it's for your throat. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how you're but meant listen, to use For people it. who do a bit of training, yeah. particularly yeah. if you're out yeah. running on the roads, yeah. on your calves, yeah. hamstrings, yeah. 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 it's really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm meant to be enjoying it more. No, um, no, that's Oh, it. that's what you think, but my friend. I don't that's think that's a good example think. of how it's meant to be. It's okay, it's that's a, and that's so good because it's so oh, it's small, it's very it's handy. Only, yeah, exactly. It's USB charged, so you can travel with it and you don't need to bring the charger with you. Just charge it off your phone. Let's charger. move on to vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaners. This is. I was unsure about robotic vacuum cleaners when they came out because they're quite weak. They don't go out there mm. and do a 10-minute run around the home. 
but it's actually one of the best gadgets I ever bought for my house because you can set it. First of all, this one is laser guided. So it, when you first set it up and set connected to your Wi-Fi and connected to the app on your phone, okay. it maps out your home. It roams around for a couple of hours and maps it out. But is it more so for houses more with, with floorboards rather than carpets? No, carpets oh, and right, okay. um, it doesn't climb the stairs and it doesn't put, I thought that was a brilliant idea, put, put toys, toys away. away. That'd that's be what, genius. That'd be the next, next step when it has arms. I spend days just yeah. picking toys up with them away. Year. We'll have it next but, year. Um, but like, I have it set for two in the morning and it's very, very quiet. And it's not that it goes out and does a, a massive job. It's going out persistently every night and going around the whole house and just giving you don't a have really a pet, do you? dusting and cleaning. Do you have, I do a, have a little dog. And yeah. doesn't mind it. Yeah. Uh, not Likes at all. It. Not all. Uh, they end up playing he, with them, he, I think. He, he, she, doesn't, she, didn't mind, she did mind it for about a week. And now uh, she's grand. And now she's grand, because she just gets used to yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but uh, I have a friend, because I haven't got one, but I gather just exactly, like, they're quite efficient. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, basically, they go back to their little home charge yeah, and charge cradle. Up. Okay. Charge up, and then they're ready for the next night. They're not powerful, but because it's doing it every night, don't have to clean the it's floors. It's 400 quid, though. Three, yeah, 399, actually, 399. not 400. Yeah, but I mean, precise. but there'd be a lot of hoovering <laughs> to be at done for that. But listen, Do you know what? I really thought it was ridiculous at the outset. You just have to get one and realise yeah. um, there's dog hairs in my house as well. Yeah. It deals with that as well. And it really does keep the place clean because it's every night and they don't have to think yeah, about it. Yeah, my mates who have pets are like, it's a lifesaver. Yeah, you don't yeah, see those yeah. Now, this on. one I've been watching on the big screen all This morning. is far more useful. Street Fighter 2. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah. these are just... They're like, uh, Look, do you know what's very clever here? That's the console. It's yeah. a lot smaller than you're used to. Right. That goes into the back of any telly, and then these are wireless controllers. And it's got like how many games on it? It's got 3,000 games like on it. Like the games it. that wow. we all you know grew up with? Only about 500 of them I kind of recognise. The rest of them are sort of versions and variations okay. of the same Okay, but are thing. we talking like Space these Invaders, yes, Pac-Man? Yes, totally. These are the 80s and early 90s games. Yeah. You're school. not playing any of your Call of Duty on this kind of thing. This is your retro. Bit you give this maybe to a 12-year-old now, I'd say they're going to be They obsessed. wouldn't understand. Okay. They wouldn't get it. They wouldn't all the, blo the blockiness and the, the low res, but you know what? They're so playable and they're, 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 they're so nostalgic. They oh, are. I we play Mario Kart all the time. I know. Yeah. I love a bit of Mario Kart. Love Mario Kart. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Totally. And you're like, trying to press really, all the buttons. You know, what what I love about it is you can pick it up Play it straight away, and if you've got 10 minutes to kill, yeah. that's enough. You don't have to spend hours researching the backstory. No. To the I like you the know. idea of taking your kids back in time a little bit and saying, yeah. like, this is what like, we back, from the, back to the future. Back yeah. from yeah. the future, exactly. Oh, that's what we used there to we do. Go. Uh, I would not be able to live my daily life yeah. without my AirPods now. Yeah. I think it's the best thing that's ever yeah. happened to me. Yeah. So these yeah. aren't Apple AirPods. No, we, these we, are look, we're talking this year about the very... There's lots of cheap variations of the AirPods out there. Now, I've been through a lot of them. Um, and I have both the Apple AirPod Pros, which are those ones These there, versions, yeah. okay? And I do love them, but you know what? I'm freaking out about losing them. Yeah. The last set I, I damaged was uh, left in the washing machine. Yeah. And they're 300 euro yeah. for those ones. Ah, yeah. Now, these ones are 29 euro. Now, people always say, are they worth it? What's the difference? You know what? They are. There's 10 you can lose them 10 times yeah. at, at the rate but of losing effective. one set of AirPods. the sound and everything you know is... what they're about 60 percent of the quality oh, of the Apple good. AirPods. For, yeah, yeah. And that's enough for, for me. Tenth of the so price. I actually usually leave my AirPod Pros at home and bring the cheap versions with me because I go through them. Everyone well, listen, can find stuff back from the future. .ie is where you can find everything here today. Thank you so much, Colin Baker. Thank Cheers. You, Colin. Top man, love that. Now, coming up on tomorrow's show, award winning author Colin Sabine calls by to discuss his critically acclaimed new book. Plus, the skin nerd is going to be here to give us her top tips for making your face look pretty fat. Absolutely. Going into Chris. All that, plus food, fashion, and much more live from 7 on Virgin Media 1. Talk to you then. Have a great day.